Mike Tyson's dressing room. There it is. There's one of his sidekicks. They call him Crocodile. He does a lot of yapping. And here comes Jay Bright. His, the crowd reacting already. They see it on the big screens here. Jay Bright is so linked to the custom auto days. I'm sure you'll be seeing uh, Tommy Brooks, who came on board prior to the both of fight. Well, in the past, a Tyson entrance, an event unto itself. How many fights did he win by virtue of his ring walk? He would strike fear in his opponents even before the first bell. But uh, not really the case anymore. The former undisputed heavyweight champ Mike Tyson has fought only uh, three times in the last four years. Most recently in January, right here, when he knocked out Botha in the fifth. Tyson looking rusty, was behind on the scorecards. Before the dramatic resounding knockout, John Travolta and many of the celebrities on their feet getting ready as he gets closer. Wayne Newton, a fixture here in Las Vegas. Charlie Sheen on hand. Some celebrity faces in the crowd. He always brings them out. Tommy Hearns, the hit man on hand. Pierce Brosnan, Bond, James Bond. Tyson's advisor, Shelley Finkel, told me Mike's really got it together. Well, he definitely has a, a calmer attitude. He's friendlier. The crowd again reacting as he gets closer to the ring. He's been granting interviews, signing autographs, smiling, doing open workouts. Either he's had an epiphany or somebody has really gotten to him. Word is his hand speed and power remain intact. Timing is the question. The result, of course, of the repeated layoffs and advancing age. And now he finally makes it upstairs, going through the ropes and out of the canvas. And hearing it from the crowd. It's not an overwhelming cheer, but it's certainly in, in Tyson's favor. And we are set for the tail of the tape. At 34, Norris, 15 months older than Tyson, both under six feet, almost eye to eye. That's rare for both. At 218, Norris is three pounds below his heaviest ever. Tyson, exactly where he was his last fight, and a slight one-inch reach advantage. Tyson, key rules, no standing eight count, no three knockdown. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. No contest before the end of the fourth. They go to the cards if an accidental headbutt occurs after the end of round four. So here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas, Nevada, we are getting ready for the main event. Another comeback fight for Mike Tyson as he faces Orlando Norris. The official introductions from our ring announcer, the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the City of Entertainment, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time for the featured bout of the evening, a heavyweight special attraction scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing and brought to you by America Presents, matchmaker Thomas Brown in association with Showtime Championship Boxing and the MGM Grand. This featured bout coming your way is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Dr. Elias Ghanem. Commissioners are Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Pertita, Dr. Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. The executive director is Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Omansky, Dr. William Berliner, Dr. Margaret Goodman. Timekeepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns. We have James Cavan and Mike Lachella. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside, all three from Las Vegas, Art Lurie, Dave Moretti, and Dolby Shirley. Introducing the third man of the ring, our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go. The time has come for our main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, 
wearing gray trunks with black trim, fighting out of San Diego, California by way of Lubbock, Texas. He weighed in at a ready 218 pounds. His record stands at 50 wins, five losses, one no decision, with 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the former WBA Cruiserweight Champion of the World, introducing uh, Orland, Night Train uh, Norris. opponent across the ring on my left ready to fight out of the red corner entering the ring wearing his traditional black trunks and hailing from Catskill New York he weighed in at 223 pounds with a record of 46 wins and three losses he has 40 wins coming by way of knockout here is the youngest man ever to win the heavyweight title please welcome the explosive two-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Mike Tyson. Once again, a referee in charge, Richard Steele. Okay, you guys, I spoke to you both in the dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. Keep all of your punches in front of the man, watch the low blow. Shake hands and good luck. Tyson should look sharper tonight. Look for him to be the aggressor. I think we'll go after the defensive-minded Orlin Norris, but the feeling is Norris will look to uh, survive by grabbing and holding, and he'll try to box. But Norris's trainer, Abel Sanchez, says when it when it really gets tough in there, Tyson won't be moving and throwing combinations. He'll revert to what he does best, throwing bombs. We'll see. Richard Steele, controversial referee, the third man, and here we go. Lapel for round one, and Tyson comes right out with a straight left. Orland's a great defensive fighter, good offensive fighter as well, not with the power of Mike, but he's probably a little quicker, very sneaky, good movement, and he's used to going the distance, Steve. He can go and do the 10 rounds, no problem. Morris heavily muscled, not quite as defined and carved as Tyson. They're not used to being on the same eye level as each other. Both are heavily muscled and the same muscle type. Good left hook to the belly by Mike Tyson right there. Tyson going to the body. This is going to be something new. Mike's used to springing up in the big men. Now he has a short man, the same size, right in front of him. Great. Notice right there, Orlin Norris also grabbed Mike's left arm right inside and walked him counterclockwise away from that left hook. At least Mike is trying to jab more than he did in the other fights. They've trained him to start to come in with a jab. Well, he's coming in with a jab. And Norris boxing, right. throwing the jab. And Tyson holds. Norton, Norris, very cool. He's not at all upset. He's just boxing like he always does. Not at all intimidated by the no, moment. Not at all. Heavy right hands, a series of rights to the head and body by Mike Tyson, getting a roar from the crowd. Here's that jab of Norris again. Warren still hasn't stopped and picked his spot. He's looking for the spot to get that pound of flesh. He's got to hit Mike and sting on little so he can get some respect. Then he can implement his game plan much easier. And Norris's best weapon, the double left hook. There's a straight left hand there by uh, Mike Tyson, and then he follows it up with a combination and a right uppercut. Dylan's very hard to hit clean. Keeps his hands high and tight, rolls, uses his shoulders to roll with the punches and block them. If Mike is not in condition to go good 10 rounds at good pace, could be interesting after we get past five and six. Orland's one of these kind of guys that's fought everybody. He's not intimidated at all. I mean, he's doing this just like if he's fighting any, any, anybody else for the championship. Come on, I don't know what I see in Tyson yet. Uh, he's coming on, in with that with a with a jab. Break, it looks back, like he's not bending from the waist hold. enough. He's certainly not moving his head enough. He's still standing straight up. See, he's not bending over like he used to and coil and spring. Punch get out of there. Break somebody. Step back to me. Norris, a consummate defensive fighter, good boxer, counterpuncher. Oh man. 
don't come over start now. Getting cautioned by Richard Steele as we head for the bell. That was a punch uh, while they were talking. Steel says. Get up the bell. That's two points. Oh, oh really? two points. That ducks two points. Oh, really? He could have lost the whole fight. Two fight, two points. Put that on American Express. What and just like that, that the crowd is turned on up, Tyson. You gotta listen up. That cost you two points. Listen. Need that jab. Get him looking at. Get your belt on. Show him that jab. Oh, you cannot stay in front of him. When you throw a punch, you gotta walk him. You gotta move him. And once again, Richard Steele in the center of a hurricane. Mike Marley in the background. Norris's advisor is screaming at the top of his lungs. It's a disqualification because he hit him after the bell, and I clean it up for you. I, I'd like to see that again because it almost looked to me like if it was at the same time as him saying break and the punch going time. Well, now this is politics now. The bell is rung for round two, but nothing's happening. Norris in the corner shaking up there. Abel Sanchez seems his knee. He's looking at his leg. He's saying his knee is hurting him. This is about a knee. This is not about anything else. It's the right day of Norris. Unbelievable. This is not about his head. Dr. Flip Hamansky, the man with the goatee. It's me. He can't continue. His head and he cannot continue. Oh, man. I can't make him continue. You know what? This I can't reminds make me. him continue. Now he goes over to the executive director of the Nevada Athletic Commission, Mark Rapp. Can you believe this after one round? I can believe anything in Tyson land. It doesn't seem like we're ever going to have a normal fight. There's Elias Gottam. Boy, somebody's mad as heck. From the Nevada Athletic Commission, they're conferring with all of the guys there now. Why would a blow on the head hurt your knee? I mean, you know, what? Well, when he went down, right, he made let's watch it. Let's he made watch it. slammed on his knee when he went down. Let's well, see. Well, let's see. I, I want to hear him say break and, and at the time, watch Tyson's arm. No, here he is. See? Oh, it's oh, buckled. Cold. Yeah. You can see his leg buckled as he went down. I'll tell you what, though, if you, I would like to see it at regular speed with the with the sound. Cause I think you hit him on the bell, right on the bell. That's what. That's the way I see it, Bob. I, I think that was a simultaneous thing, just as it was happening. Here comes Mark Ratner. <laughs> let's let's listen. scurrying in the ring uh -oh. they, they better they better put protection here up comes here. security boy we've seen this scene before with a tyson fight let's not see it again they're forming a, a circle around tyson and you can hear the crowd chanting its displeasure now and things are getting ugly again there's shelly finkel tyson's advisor Look at the amount of security in the ring. You were fine. This is fine. Well, everybody seems to be in the dark. Well, I've never seen anything stop because of a knee injury, have you? I haven't. Nope. And I've been in it for 40 years. We're dispatching the fight doctor into the ring. Maybe he can lend some uh, insight into what's going on when he talks to people. And meanwhile, they're, they're taping up the injured right knee of Orland Norris, which buckled when he went down. At the end of round one, he was hit. 
bring him right to It seemed after the bell by Mike Tyson. Mike Marley, Norris's advisor, screaming. And it should be a disqualification, and Norris should be the winner. You know, Steve, I got the impression that Mike was trying to jam the left uppercut up as the bell was going off. I don't know that it was just a that it was a clean left hook after the bell conscious thought. I, I really don't. I mean, I'd like to see it again. It just all happened too fast. And when you start a punch, it's hard. But it's like the kid who, the kid who cried wolf, Bobby. It's like how many times can we see this happening? with Mike Tyson we will take another look we'll, we'll show it again but we don't we don't want to leave the ring right now saga continues never an easy day we want to stay right with this picture because anything can happen but we will definitely show you a replay of the end of the first round uh, again I'm sure you'll see it several times again before this thing is over so once again Mike Tyson and controversy come together wish I could hear what Shelly Finkel was just saying well let's find out what's going on we'll get Jimmy Lennon Jr. up there in the ring to uh, make an announcement take it Jimmy Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. This bout has been stopped after round number one due to an accidental foul which occurred after the bell rang. This bout is officially ruled at this time a no contest. Well, you heard it. The bout has been officially declared a no contest. The fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, is with Mike Tyson. Ferdy? All right. Another night, another Tyson night. Give me your view of what happened. Did you throw the punch after you heard the bell? Well, you know, you were there. You saw it. It was simultaneous with the bell. And the punch wasn't that devastating. He could have continued. He quit on his stool. But I'll take him again in my next fight. I'll fight him right away. Well, let's fight him in December. I'd love to. All right. Let me ask you something. How could a blow to the jaw hurt his knee? Listen, all right? I you, he knew the next round I was going to put that heat on him. He wasn't ready for that heat. Yeah, that's right. All right. That's right. Can, Shelly, can they do something legally to screw this up? Can they no. go talk disqualification? No, they did already. They ruled it a no contest. It shouldn't have been that, but they did. We're ready to go back whenever Mike wants, and Mike said immediately. Your disappointment, I'm sure, was great. You've trained well. You're ready for a good fight. You're ready to come back in December against anybody. I feel great, and I just want to continue to fight one fight at a time and fight around four more fights and fight for the championship. Yes, sir. All right. If this so happens that it falls in December, you could fight this guy again. Would you be willing, Shelly, to oh, fight? Of course. Of course. Uh, not me. Mike would fight him. No, but you're... you're... <laughs> All right. Sure. Let, 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 hey, we, you and I have been around a long time together. You feel your snake bit or something every time something happens. God, every time you come up here, something crazy happens. Well, listen, all praise be to Allah. I don't want to dwell on this anymore. I just want to say hi to my friend, the Smith family out there in, in, in Gilbert, Arizona. I like to say hi to Tiger Woods. We trained together with Keith Clevin, and he did it, and I wanted to score another knockout because you were successful. And I like to say hi to my friend Chuck Zito and get well soon. I love you, brother. Peace. All right. I think that uh, helps everybody else. Let's go back to Steve Albert at ringside. Well, uh, just got a, a, an official explanation uh, from uh, the other ringside physician here uh, telling us that Norris twisted his knee when he fell, and there you see the uh, the results of it all. And I believe underneath that, Steve, there's a scar from some previous surgery and injury. So once again, Controversy and Mike Tyson are connected as this fight ends after one round. We're going to take another listen to exactly how it sounded at the end of the first round. Oh, it's right! Oh, wow. He definitely hit him after the bell. He definitely hit him after the bell. I don't know if he heard it. I don't know what registered. It was definitely after the bell. It wasn't long after the bell, but it was after the bell. We've got... We've got to uh, find out if Mike Tyson heard that bell.
Unbelievable. They stopped the fight after round one on an accidental foul. They call it a no contest. This thing goes three minutes and it's over. And there's a lot of befuddled people here. Purdy's up there with Orlin Norris now. Purdy? How do you feel ending this thing in this bizarre fashion? I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want it to end like this. Um, I mean, I was doing what I needed to do in the fight, you know. Um, uh, you know, he hit me clearly after the bell run. You know, I, did you hear the bell and then the blow? Oh, I, I heard the bell and I was I was about ready to take a step back to advance toward him. You know, but I still was watching him. But you know, he, he threw an uppercut. Rich still stuck his arm in, and then come another uppercut that he caught me with. You know, I but he definitely caught you with one. Oh yeah, he hit me. He hit me pretty square with him. You know, I mean, knocked me down. What do you think happened to your knee? Why did it give away like that? Well, I mean, like I said, I was <clears throat> the bell that rang. I know that rang. I was in a a position where I was on, on my way back, where I was just gonna spin and go back, you know. But he threw, he threw the uppercut, you know, boom, boom, you know, and I was just in, in the wrong position. We've just finished interviewing. He says he wants to have you back as soon as possible. Is December too early for you? Uh, what, well, you know, uh, I don't know. I have to see, you know, what's wrong with my knee, you know. But uh, you mean we're gonna put you on injured reserve like for the football team? <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to be like that because this is not football, you know. You think it can recover? Have you, have you ever had any injury to that knee? Let's start there. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. This is a knee that's given you problems before. Well, you know, I've, I've, uh, I heard it once before, you know, but it's never given me problems. You've, have, you had a, have you ever got it uh, operated on? Yes. Yeah. You had an operation on the knee, and this is the one that went. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, it wasn't. It didn't. It didn't go because of, uh, because of anything. It, it went because the way when I went down, the way my leg was contorted. That's what happened to me. Yeah. Otherwise, there was nothing wrong with my knee. You know, my knee was fine. It's been fine for, you know, probably eight years. You know, but it was just <clears throat> the way that I was stepping away from the uh, the action and got caught with a shot. You think you're just part of the Tyson curse? Then no matter what he does, it, it ends up strange. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to end like this. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't. I'm not into cursing or anything like that. You know, I just I want to. I want. I want to have a fight where it would be clean. I lost. Uh, you know. If I lost, I lost. You know, if I got knocked out. I got knocked out, but not not by getting hit. You know, at the end of the bat. Was the fight going the way you thought it was going? Were you satisfied with the first round? Were you? Were you? Oh yeah, I, I felt like I was winning the first round. You know, I felt his power. You know, you know, and um, you know, I knew what I had to do. You know, from that point on. You know, that was just that was just the beginning of my my whole strategy. You know, to boxing. You know, and uh, <clears throat> feel his power. You know, and uh, you know, I, I had I had got past that round. You know. All right. So the main the main thing for you then is to rest, to rehabilitate your knees, see what's necessary for it, and then make future plans to see if you come back with Tyson again, or if they bypass you and keep on going. Right. That's that's my plan to see what happens. You know. All right, uh, Abel. One. Uh, we are going to go back to Stephen Bobby at ringside, but your last thing: Are you very disappointed? Extremely disappointed. I, I